Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Seek and Destroy show. And today we're going to talk about the cancellation of the Batgirl movie. And I know I'm late on this. I just had a lot of stuff going on with work lately. And I, so I made an Instagram post about it, but I really was like, I need to make time to make a video. And since I was already up doing some Venom vlog stuff, I figured I would go ahead and squeeze this in there as well and get this video out to you as soon as possible. So this you know, movie, I was really shocked to see that it got canceled because it was already finished filming and they were already into pre-production on or post-production on it. And so I, I just, that typically doesn't happen. Normally movies do not get shelved. Uh, you know, I, I think of all the bad stuff that we've all seen probably over the years, uh, movies that you don't like, it, you know, liking something is subjective. So a studio, they may show something to an audience and get, if they get good constructive feedback, they may go, okay, we can change a few things before we release the film, but they don't re typically shelve stuff completely like this. So I, I just was kind of blown away by that. This new guy who's running Warner Brothers and stuff, uh, Zavloff, I think his name is. Um, he's he's a lot more uh, he, he's a lot more direct, and uh, he's he clearly has maybe some kind of idea or vision of what he wants from the DC films or universe or, or just business wise. He thought it was just not worth you know keeping this movie around and i think that doesn't bode well for some other dc movies uh, including flash maybe even because with all the controversies going on there and i know some people are like ah but the spending they're gonna lose money blah 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 and it's like not really they this merger this new company warner discovery whatever they didn't spend money on those projects it wasn't their money that was spent uh yes it was probably investors and it was you know a lot of other people and typically to make nice with investors who invest in your movie, you want them to get, at least get their money back. Uh, so I feel like they're gonna come up with some business strategy where they can write this off and say this was money used by the previous regime or company uh, before Warner Discovery came about. And then they can do some tax thing where they give everyone their money back uh, who invested in it, possibly. But I, I feel like that's even a stretch to think that that's possible. So I'm trying to understand this from like a business standpoint, from a creative standpoint, and really it doesn't make sense on either. You know, no matter how bad the movie may or may not be, because uh, some people were saying, oh, we heard it was, you know, terrible and someone screened it and they, they thought it was awful. And it's like, we, but that again, that's subjective and that's one person's opinion. And typically you don't make a big decision like this over a, a single opinion. Um, I guess unless you're the the boss of Warner Brothers Discovery, <laughs> it may be, uh, but it just it just really took me off guard because uh, you know movies are, you know thousands of people sometimes that are working really hard to make something, hoping that it's good enough and their work at least is good enough in the project to get them future work, and you don't know if their movie is going to get them future work until it's released you know sometimes uh, sometimes actors you know they try to book their next things before their current thing comes out but when your current thing gets canned like this that doesn't it doesn't bode well for you know for trying to get more work i think they even did a whole uh, a season or something of entourage i always go back to entourage because although i've worked in movies and tvs and stuff uh and tv shows and everything and, and that had seen that world um, Entourage did a really good job of basing stories off of Mark Wahlberg's life and then, you know, adding stuff to from people that he's been in contact with and friends he's made and what they've gone through. And they did a really good season on Entourage where the main character, Vince, uh, was in a movie and the director hated him and wanted to get him fired, even though he was playing a smaller role. And uh, and then the movie never got released. Uh, War I think it was even Warner Brothers or someone was like, you know, we can't we can't spend any more money on this. It's over budget. It's it's all these things. So we're not going to release it. And then Vince like, but I need the footage to get me my next job. So he had to like ask special permission to get footage uh, to show it to Martin Scorsese, hoping it would get him his next you know movie or something. And uh, but that that is it's a stressful thing uh, situation to be put in. Uh, but also all the cast and crew who worked really hard for a company and now it looks like that work is is not appreciated by the new uh you know bosses i guess it, it just it, it can be mis or this can be interpreted i should say not misconstrued this can be interpreted so many ways by people involved and people watching from the outside like us fans and i just i wanted to talk about some of it and just have like a verbal diarrhea about what i feel about this because i, I feel barbara gordon is a strong enough character to do a solo movie. I thought the costume looked really cool. Uh, you know, I, I know people out there have different opinions on that, but 
I liked the 66 Batman show with Barbara Gordon. I mean, I think that was a lot of people my age, you know, a lot of guys my age and some girls my age, uh, that that was their first crush was Barbara Gordon on that show. Um, she's beautiful, <laughs> you know, and, and I think that really uh, connected a lot of people to that character at a young age. And then the way they handled her in the animated series, I thought was really great, uh, the Batman animated series in the 90s. Um, and then throughout the comic books, I mean, Barbara Gordon has, has had one of the, most interesting histories. Uh, you, they've done things to her that they couldn't do with most characters, um, and they they had the balls to do it. I mean, having her be shot, uh, you know, and and tortured by Joker to in order to try to turn her father, uh, uh, you know, into a villain in a way. He was trying to break her father's psyche, uh, and Joker didn't succeed. You know, Batman lost it and beat the crap out of Joker, but you know, Gordon's like, no. Uh, after all the things, even in Batman Hush. You know, when Batman was going to kill Joker, he's like, for Jason, for Barbara, you know, and Gordon's like, don't. Like, it, once you do it, he gets what he always wanted, and we can't let him win like that. And they even did that kind of version of uh, Bat uh, of uh, Commissioner Gordon in the Dark Knight movie, when, you know, he was telling Batman, you can't kill, you can't compromise, uh, you know, you can't take the, the shortcut road. Um, and, but that's just, that strength that Gordon has, that Jim Gordon has, that's in Barbara. And and I feel like Barbara is one of the only people in the DC universe that could have gone through that and still continued on as a superhero. I mean, she became the Oracle after that in the pages of Suicide Squad uh, by John Ostrander and then it continued to grow, but through Gail Simone and other writers and, and then eventually became Batgirl again. But I, she's had such a cool history and, and one that's very inspirational and one that means something to people who you know do live their lives in wheelchairs or do have you know uh, a, a condition or a disability that uh, they that that makes them feel like they connect to the character, and I think one of the biggest mistakes DC's made was you know having her walk again, um, you know, and that's coming from someone who was in a wheelchair and now walks again. It's it's a lot of hard work, and I'm not saying Barbara Gordon can't do it, but her injuries were very different. Uh, mine was more psychological. Hers was an actual injury through the spine, you know, the bullets and stuff. So if anything, I was like, yeah, you could have made her a Green Lantern, you know, or something like that, because the willpower she must have to get through what she's been through and still be Barbara Gordon, still be an amazing person, um, is is unprecedented. And most other DC characters, and if they went through what she went through, they wouldn't have survived or they would have become a villain, um, like Jason Todd, you know, in a way. Uh, so to me, Barbara is, is, is such a great character. And, and so to see her finally get a movie, I was so excited. And... And then to see it get taken away like this, I'm, I'm very distraught by it. And I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, let down uh, because I was curious. I wanted to see how it was. I, I thought the casting choices were interesting. I thought the tone it looked like was pretty interesting. Um, and they they looked like they were trying to meld a couple different uh, versions of the character together. And, and I still would have liked to seen it. I, you know, even if I ended up hating it and thinking it was awful, I still would like to make that decision for myself, um, especially after like 70 or $80 million was already spent to try to get the movie made. So I, I'm just really curious. This Zavloff guy it seems really intense. Uh, he's doing things that I don't see happen a lot in Hollywood, um, if ever, you know, very rarely. And now he's going to do a press conference today. This is Thursday morning. I'm recording this. So I'm sure I'll have an update to this later with, uh, you know, other DC films that he talks about and if they announce anything today. So if they do, I'll make a follow up to this. Um, but for now, I just I just wanted, again, verbal diarrhea. I just wanted to get my my thoughts on this movie being canceled out there. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of it being canceled. Uh, I, I'm, again, curious to see what it was. And I, I see all these videos out there of these grifters who, you know, make it about woke and, you know, oh, well, this is, you know, this is Zavloff is, he's not going to go broke for being woke or whatever. And it's just like, dude, grift all you want to, you know, make it a me versus them thing. But at the end of the day, we're all comic book fans and we should all, you know, we don't have to all agree on stuff. But to, to wish ill on people who worked really hard on something and wish their project and their art never gets out there, it's funny because you'll see it from people who make their own comics and then they say, yeah, this movie shouldn't be out there. It's too woke, whatever. And it's like, so so that art shouldn't be out there, but your art should be out there. Like, you may not like it. That's fine. I don't like when I get preached to. I certainly don't like that. But it's a form of art and it's a, a way to express things. And people who... Uh, create that stuff there are people out there that feel the same way and they deserve to have their own piece of art too just like everyone 
deserves to have their own version of Superman or has their own version of, you know, Green Lantern or whatever, like, you know, you should be able to tell art the way you want to tell it because that's what it is. It's art. And filmmaking is art. It's a business also, though, definitely. And so is most forms of art. It has a business side to it. Um, but I, from an art standpoint and a business standpoint, I'm really... I really don't know if I can wrap my head around this decision. So hopefully we'll get more news or information about it today. But for now, I just wanted to get my just thoughts out there, my general thoughts on the initial news of it being canceled. Uh, I'm just kind of blown away by it. Uh, but this just looked like a, a potentially fun, interesting, hopefully, you know, and cool Batgirl movie with Brendan Fraser, who I'm a big fan of, who's going to play Firefly. Um, I was really happy that he was cast in it. And then Michael Keaton and, and J.K. Simmons and Leslie Grace. I was like... I'm interested in this. This this could could have been really really good. It could have been really really bad. You you never know. But it's for us to decide. You know, like after all that money spent and all those people work really hard on it, it should come out and it should be. It, it, it we should decide its fate. You know, we should decide if it's dead on arrival or not. Uh, that's the power that you know the viewers get to have. Um, the people ingesting the art. That's our power in this. That's our part of the relationship. You know, when it comes to they make the business and creative decisions and we decide if we like it or not. That's the relationship. So when you don't release it and you take away that uh, you know ability for us to be involved in some way as viewers and fans, it doesn't send a good message, I feel like. And I also feel like it doesn't send a good message for Zavloff coming in as the new boss who's like, I can just terminate movies whenever I want, you know, apparently. Uh, it's what message that send to all the people that work really hard for you at this at this company. And, uh, and you can sit there and say, oh, well, he's going to get rid of a lot of the people up top. Yeah, but it's the people at the bottom I think about. I don't give a shit about business suit people who make these decisions sometimes. Like, they're not people to me. They, they only think about money. And, and although I like thinking about money too, and I like having money so I can buy cool DC collectibles and stuff, um, you know, but I also, I also understand that those people just view things in a way that I can't. And I view things from a worker's standpoint at the bottom. I'm all, all, all my life, most of the jobs I've had have been at the bottom. And so I think about those people when shit rains downhill, how does it affect them? How does it affect them getting future work and everything? And that's what I feel like here. When I saw this news, the first thing I thought of was, you know, the people who worked hard on it, uh, you know, from actors to crew members to PAs to everybody. And now, yeah, most of them have probably already went on to, to their next jobs and got their next jobs. But some people are waiting to get their ne next jobs, too, based on uh, possible success of this movie and uh, and also to prolong their careers and hope they have a long career in the movie business. They needed this movie to come out to set to you know make that a, a, a thing or not you know whether it was gonna set them on the path of success or add another bump in the road the movie coming out was supposed to define that uh through our reaction to it and now we don't have it and now we're all just going to be left wondering you know whatever happened to that background movie much like that nicholas cage superman movie in the uh, in the 90s although this was actually filmed and in post-production whereas that was was not you know finished or even filmed i believe uh, by the by tim burton so uh yeah i don't know i have a lot in my head but I'll, i'm hopefully we'll get more answers later today and uh and if so i'll um if it's not a ton of new stuff i'll tack it on to this video when i edit it if it is a ton of new stuff i'll make a separate video and this will just go up a little little later so thank you so much uh you know let me know your thoughts about this down below in the comments and as always we'll continue the conversation down there and a shaking his head means i gotta end the show so thank you so much see you in the future peace